What is going on guys? Welcome to another RMA Fire tutorial. I am RMA and today I want to share with you how to make really cool liquid fluids in Houdini. And let's look at um, the things that that we're gonna tweak here. Let's increase that value there so that this thing is faster to load. And on the flip tank I'm cl closing all the boundaries. What is that? What that means is that whatever fluid that is gonna go out of here, it's gonna be closed, um, and it's just not gonna let it go out. It's just gonna collide. Um, I didn't really change too many things. You will see that everything is pretty much as default. Um, I think I did add a viscosity to this in here. Enable viscosity by attribute and I gave it a 4 just to make it more like paint, paint like. And um, you will see that I didn't really change anything, anything else too much. This is, this is gonna come in like this as default for you guys as well. Um, you can see. The splashy kernel is default. You don't really need to change too many things here. I mean, if you wanted to, you can add a little bit of vorticity. But this build is already kind of set. Um, on the volume source, we're gonna use our volume velocity. So if we click here, it's gonna take us to see what it is that we use. Our volume velocity, which is this thing, which is our our volume coming here so this is where we're bringing in the volume and we're only using one attribute we're bringing in the vector attribute so we do volume source you're gonna wanna click here go into the object go into the initial and select um, actually on the create base and I'll be ball and density is already here okay but we want to change we want to add the operation here of velocity like here velocity is a vector we are gonna use V bell as in velocity so source volume is the velocity target field is the bell and the source scale this is how intense the velocity is going to be computed when you bring it into here. So I'm cranking it up pretty high. So the last thing is that you see source, I'm using source fuel because this is, as we saw earlier, um, you want to click source fuel and it's it automatically going to create this for you. And then I deleted this too. And that's essentially all that I'm doing inside there. You will see that there's really nothing else that changes. So you do volume source, you change it to fuel, you grab here the velocity that you had outside, and then you should be good to go. Then I'm adding the gravity, and the gravity you see it's when you add a gravity, it's gonna come in as in negative 9.8, the default gravity. And I'm overriding that to negative four. So what happens when we have a look at this? Let's hit here and play. These are the velocities that it's coming closer. That are coming in. It, it, it will create some really really beautiful splashes. All right, guys. So. Um, as you can see, we get some really cool uh, interactions and it's almost like a pump because like we're not letting the water or whatever it is kind of like go outside of this thing. So like it all kind of contains in there and it has a little bit of viscosity. You see that it kind of hits and it's kind of like on this pond. That's why it has some really cool ripples and stuff. Um, and you can play with the viscosity and you can you can also play with that scale velocity attribute here and then you can also 
change your, change your, your animation or do any kind of animation here. Um, so if you're coming here, you will see that I cached a low-res sample of this for you guys. If we come in here, you will see this is my high-res cache, the one that you saw on the tutorial's uh, intro video. And if we come in here, this is the low-res, just for the sake of testing. So what you want to do is you want to cache the thing and then do a particle fluid surface. And on the particle fluid surface, there are a couple of parameters that you can play around with. Uh, one being the particle separation. The higher the particle count, the lower you can go in the particle separation part of things. So you see that here we can do like a 0.01 and it's going to give us some decent amount of detail. And then we can go into the filtering and play with the dilate and the road to like smooth things out. And you will see here, so I'm going to stop that. You will see here in the cache for that, uh, that, it, that the one that I had done prior is pretty detailed. Takes a little bit of time to load. So yeah, you can see that it has quite a lot of detail, it was really nice. So what you want to do is, after you cache this, you create another file cache, you connect your output here, you name it whatever you want to name it, and then I'd like to do time dependent but explicit, and do $OS large $OS dot dollar f dot bgeo dot sc to write out the sequence and what this is going to do is it's going to save it on your geo folder and it's going to create a folder with whatever name you write here and inside of that the cache is going to be whatever name you have here plus the frame and this is the file type that we're writing out the last thing that we're going to do in terms of here preparation is in adding a color and in the color we're going to do ramp from a velocity attribute and if you hit here you can test out a couple of different colors so that's essentially changing color based on velocity so it gives each uh, part of the velocity a different color and then we're going to go into our material and we're gonna do a little bit of rendering. So before we go into rendering, let's have a look at um, the cameras that I set up. Each of the cameras has a depth of field enabled. So if you hit Z on your viewport, you will be able to like control the depth of field, meaning the center is in focus. And then you go to redshift and enable the depth of field. And on view, you can control the resolution. So we have camera 1, camera 2, and camera 3. We're going to go on camera 1 and we're going to add an RS light, RS dome. And on the dome, you can select here texture, whichever HDR dome that you have to get it set up. And then we're going to go into our material. And I'm going to show you what I did on the material. So on the material, what I the first thing that I did is we're gonna do an RS material, redshift material. So if you type RS material, you get this. On redshift material, you get this. And you wanna connect this to the surface. Then I then you can start to like click here so that you can start to add stuff to it. Basically, all I did is a material blend. Connect this here. And I add it duplicate whatever material you have and connect it onto the second input and then on the third input actually on the second input this is the blend color so the matte so whatever is black is this material what is white is this material so i'm using the rs point attribute to bring in the colors here 
So I'm gonna turn on the render and I'll show you guys on the render so it's a little bit easier to understand. So we got a pull out and we wanna do a redshift render. On the redshift render, we select it and we do render view so that we can visualize what this thing is looking like. Houdini and select the one that we want and we want to select camera one and we are gonna go back to our material level so that we can look into what this is doing. So before even looking at the final product, I'm gonna show you guys what particle attribute lookup does. So if you do a particle attribute, RS point attribute, and you connect it here, it's already coming with the attribute CD. So see, it's, it's just bringing in the color color information. That's the only thing that that one's doing. Okay, so if we look at the material on the very top, this material right here is just a plasticky material, but I'm connecting the color onto the diffuse material. So if you come in here, you can select the plastic material, and then I reduce the roughness to zero to make it quite very reflective and then the second material this is a gold material so we plug this thing in here if you want to have some really cool liquid gold here's how you do it look at that I might actually set up a render of this and share it on the tutorial as well because I think that the gold will look really really cool uh, I just changed the reflectivity color and as you can see I'm using an RS color correct here for the point attribute lookup to bring in the black and white and mixing these two materials, the gold and the color. So as you can see where it's black it's gold and where it's white it's this other material. Didn't really change anything else, that's it guys. Alright and then on the out. I created a redshift drop the same way I did down there. Let's delete this. And in here, on the redshift drop, I selected which camera I want. So in this one, I want camera 3, 2, and 1. And on the output, I should probably do $OS so that it puts, creates a folder with that name slash $OS.$F.EXR. And that's gonna create that name here in a folder and put it all organized for us. We can copy and paste that onto all of our outs. And we are gonna do liquid action and name it gold. Uh, this one I'm just gonna render out in gold. So this is gonna be one, this is gonna be two, and the third one is gonna be number three. Uh, and then we merge them and we come in here and you can say okay render this frame by frame or node by node and you want to select all of your nodes main and on main you come down here and you say non click this up non blocking current frame render and you said render and it's just gonna render three shots overnight or whatever um, and that's it guys I hope you liked it this is a really really cool one one of my favorite tutorials and uh i will be back with more i hope you guys enjoy it